The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the June 28th. Wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Today, you and I, we're gonna go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're gonna go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in right now, 877-927-6648, internationally, 727-445-1044. Of course, you can send me an email at steve at tfnn.com. Inside that heading, just put radio show question, and I will get to your specific question. And inside the Tiger's Den, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trade up 156 points. She's trading out of 21,467. S&P up 21 points, trading at 2440. NDX 100, that's up 65 points, one and two tenths percent. The Russell 2000, the leader in the clubhouse, up nearly 2%, one and six tenths percent. Let's call it what it is. At 22 points, the upside, that's 1425, where she's trading at. Semiconductors up one and a half points, that's up 15. A New York Stock Exchange, long and strong, giving you huge signals out here. There ain't no major top anywhere near this date today in history as of 2017 it's at a new all-time high and what you and i know just as dave mason would tell you is there ain't no highs that form ain't no major tops that form when the new york stock exchange advanced decline line is a brand new all-time high we haven't even taken out the highs yet and the advanced decline is all the way up there uh, gold that's up three bucks Silver's up 14 pennies. Now, silver's up 9 tenths percent. Silver has given us the long signal out here. Gold has not just yet. Light Sweet Crude has given us long signal. That was yesterday. That's up 43 cents. So expect to anticipate more of a move higher in it. It's trading out at 44.67. Uh, natural gas, that's been on a roar for the last uh, couple of days out here. That continues to want higher price. Uh, lead the charge here. Individual stock wise, the upside price line is up 28 bucks, one half percent. Regenerative pharmaceuticals back in the game, up two percent, trading out at uh, five twelve seventy six. Amazon up ten dollars or one percent. Charter Communications up nearly three percent. Spectrenetics Corp. They must have solved something. They're up 26%, up $8. Tesla's up 7 or 2%. Advanced Auto Parts is the one that's taken on the chinny, chin, chin, down 3 bucks or 2.5%. Equinix down $3. Polarity Inc. down 260. O'Reilly Automotive down 260. Um, that's pretty much it, really, to the uh, downside out there. So, where do you want to begin? Look, folks, this is uh, no time for either bulls or bears to really celebrate, I think. Well, let's go take a look at what's really been going on over the course of the last several weeks. Let's go take a look at the indices out here, right? You take a look. Here is the Dow for the week. Now, it's only Wednesday. Granted, we're, you know, mid-stroke mid through the week, but we are headed into a holiday-ish type long extended weekend with the exception of the fact that July 4th falls on Tuesday versus Monday. But for most people, 
uh, most traders, uh, you know, trading should get pretty low. There's not going to be any volume that's going to be pushed to the downside. That's for sure. Of course, there's nothing that's for sure. But if you take a look at this Dow chart out here, there's no resistance anywhere. We've just seen, you know, a small range body last week, this week out here. But otherwise, everything looks good. Last time there was any resistance here inside of the uh, Dow, I'll just use a horizontal line to show you where that would be. That's at about this price level right here around the 21,000 level. That's the last time you saw a weekly bearish candle that had formed out there and price is well above that so 21,000 would be support for the Dow. let's go flip through all of these out here or most of these let's take a look at the S&P 500 next take a look at it because each of these are going to generate some different messages now if you were trading the spies as an example over the course of the last four weeks or you were trying to trade in and out of the spy going long and short out here you'd be pretty frustrated why? Because it's been nothing more than a sideways consolidation move out here. We're continuing to test the highs. And as you know and I know, this is not the way that bear markets form. Instead, this is just really creating the next floor, the next base for price to move higher. How much higher? At 25, then 26. I think we have a target. I'll have to go look, but I think our targets are in the 30. 100 ish area 31 30 i don't let's go see what our targets are for the s p 500 let's not just talk about it let's go put some pedal to the metal let's go take a look at some actual levels out here and the level is 2620 my apology for being up there by a tad 2620 to 2637 is where your s p wants tattoo now 2625 will be the top of its next daily horizontal trading range but the really the one that you want to be paying attention to i would say is the weekly we we're just looking at a weekly chart out there a few moments ago for the s p 500 this one provides you you and i with more clarity what kind of clarity we're talking about when you get to these solid horizontal lines out here in fact just to make it easier for you let's get rid of the mid strokes out there you might say there's too many numbers for me to follow you on tiger tv even though it is an hd let's go ahead and get rid of those midpoint lines and we're just going to take the primary horizontal trading ranges and when you get to the next level in this case here was the 2430 area and you try to break above it what you really like to see for a bullish confirmation is price just hanging out here staying above that area but coming back testing rejecting testing rejecting testing rejecting in fact that's what's really taken place over the course of the last four weeks out here so for those of you that are bulls and you've been frustrated in the s p 500 it's okay just wait because you're gonna get your wish you're gonna see the s p 500 head into that 26 20 area by when Mm, you know, now you're asking for a whole lot out there. You have to sign up for the super service in order to get that. Just kidding you out there. And let's not talk about when. Let's just talk about where price is headed to. Now, if we go back and we take a look at the indices out here, just to kind of get a feel for what's going on. Right? It's always good, you know, if you get too caught up into the to the minutia, you know, the daily activity, and you don't put things in perspective out there. Well, then you don't really have a perspective effective, so to speak, out here. Let's take a look at the Russell 2000. Let's go see what the good old Russell 2000 is doing. She's going to go ahead and, she or he, is going to go ahead and take out its size. If we take a look at resistance inside of the Russell 2000, again, we'll just use a horizontal line. We'll kind of guess on the price area. Here's your evening star formation out here. Well, that actually would say, really, if we take a look at it, it's really running right into resistance as we speak right now. So and it's, we're at 1425 for the year Russell. So if you see a close above this area, well, first, first of all, let, let's just get this clear and out of the way. Don't be short the Russell 2000. It's leading the pack. <laughs> That's not what really happens in a bear market, is it? The Russell 2000 leading the pack? Uh, no, I don't think so. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. 
the bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. Hey, hot off the press. I got to share this with the, each of you out there. I, I'm going to go ahead and well, we'll let the we'll let the uh, we'll let the data speak for itself out here. Now, each day in the newsletter, let me just show the front page of my newsletter out here in the upper portion. I, I modified this a bit on March 15, 2017, and you'll see what I do is I keep a, a signal here for long term and intermediate term signals. The, the newsletter talks about uh, daily what's going on and how to trade or what to anticipate out there. But I keep so I do that for the S&P 500. I do that for gold and I do that for uh, treasuries for T-bond futures out here. And so I give you a signal uh, neutral bullish bearish out here. And that's what folks and this is this allows subscribers to uh, go ahead and trade off of this data, especially for those specific three vehicles. Now, the reason that I did that was I decided this is kind of foolish for me not to be included in the uh, market timers digest uh, group of signals out there. So I started sending them my uh, signals uh, each morning and uh, did that on March uh, 15th. Now, unfortunately, that was 2017. Unfortunately, with regard to being inclusive in what they generate out there, the S&P signal won't, uh, they won't be able to, they won't start posting that amongst everyone until March 15, 2019. They require two years. But they just sent back to me, they just ran the uh, numbers during lunch out here. I'll read it for you. It says, for the period from March 15th to June 27th, which is not their regular interval, your intermediate term stock signals produced a performance figure of 104.03, up 4% uh, out here. This would rank you number three among our universe of monitored equity newsletter writers out there. For the same period uh, out here, uh, your intermediate term bond signals produced a performance figure of 105.62. That would rank you number one 
among our universe of monitored bond newsletter writers out there. Oh, you got to love that. For the same period, your intermediate term, and you, for those of you are seeing the actual email that came in here at 115 from the uh, guy, the guys at Timer's Digest out here. For the same period, your intermediate term gold signals produced a performance guide of 107.62. Uh, that would rank you as number three among their universe of monitored gold newsletter writers. So how about that? Number three, number three, and number one. Is, so, you know, folks, if you've never tried the uh, newsletter service out there, and, and it doesn't, and this, the newsletter really covers all, the newsletter really covers all time frames, long term. I mean, you hear me, you know, on the perch talking about long term, intermediate term, and short term. And, you know, today's newsletter in the short term. You, everybody out there in this universe, right? This is the only universe that you and I care about. It's our universe, it's a TFNN universe out there. And you know, for those of you that were short, you knew at the close of business yesterday, what to do with those short positions. I say congratulations on the short position, but you knew what action to take, didn't you? You knew what action to take. Why? The action to take was to really tighten up those stops and look for a bounce or bottom signal out there. Now, you and I, we talked about that bounce or bottom signal during the day yesterday. We said what to be watching for. And we took a look at the intraday charts, 30-minute charts here. We think that is a great tool, a great time frame to be able to identify when the market is making that turn. What we saw was price was moving lower, doing it with less relative energy. How do we know that? Well, my charts here, you know, the tool that I developed, it draws that line. We also want to go ahead and pay attention to Stevie Wonders singing in the key of G. That, of course, is borrowed from Basil Chapman's Chapman Wave, seventh wave out there, letter G on my system. You get both of those that form at the same time. The alarm goes off on my cell phone and says, Steve-O, you're now in that seventh wave move out here. Time to get out of bed. Then what do you do? You wait for the cavalry, right? You have to wait for a bullish reversal signal. If you don't know your P's and Q's, meaning your real bullish or bearish candlestick signals out there, reading the charts is not going to do you a whole heck of a lot of good, especially when you are a pattern recognition trader out here. So this is what happened. Once you saw that occur, if you were short, the sphincter muscle had to get tight. In fact, you knew what to do. You knew we just looked at the S&P 500. Right now, even though the markets are going to move higher, we took a look at But right now, we're in a trader's market, right? We've had small-bodied candles. Let's go ahead and pull that back on the screen out here. We just look at the S&P itself. And so you know not to get too cocky to either side out here, at least with regard to the S&P 500. Look, when there's a clear break that happens out here, um, you'll know it. I'll certainly be able to communicate it to you. But if we take a look at this, all right, take a look at the last four weeks out here, just small ranges. It's not going to change this week. I doubt that it is going to change much this week. But what you want to be able to take away from this week is the mere fact that the S&P 500 is testing a key level uh, of support. It's no longer resistance when we take a look at, that, at those horizontal trading range boundary lines. Now, look, it's a different story inside of the NDX 100. As we take a look at the NDX 100, you know, this has seen some selling. But it still is really sideways action. You and I, let's go take a look at the Qs as an example yesterday let's go put on the uh, volume well in fact this is looking to the cues let's not put on the volume metrics let's put on the weekly chart out here because you might wonder what are some of these lines so let's go take a look at these lines because here is a set of data now this takes us back into the 2009 bottom in fact what you want to do here these just like you and i were looking at horizontal trading ranges just as we were taking a look at horizontal trading ranges out here we also want to take a look at uh, channel lines now as we take a look at the channel and that's how you would normally take a look at it in draw it and what you can see out here is price broke above the top of this channel back on here back out here in february 2017. now it's not like it's a breakout it was already moving higher out here. So what you do is just like we do in those horizontal trading ranges, you add the next level. You already have what that equidistant area, price area is. And all you do is just multiply that and add the next one. In this case here, that's your dash line. So in the case of the Qs, and this is that weekly chart that we were looking at, they're headed up 
to this next top of the green line. Where is that? That's like around the 155 and change area, somewhere around there. And if you take a look at the blue lines out here, here's just, here's just a here's just a quick the the angle at which price is traveling as you and I speak right now for the QQQs. It, it is a beautiful angle. This thing is on fire. It, it is. Nobody's really thrown the water on it. In fact, each of these declines, as we've seen, have really been buying opportunities. But still, the market may just continue to move sideways a bit out here. But uh, it, come on over to the homepage of TFN.com. I really don't spend time during the uh, show talking about the newsletter service. But it was cool to get that email and then to share it with you. Now, let's come and take a look at Let's go look at the semiconductors because we're going to see something similar. And let's, what, what you and I can do just simply with good candlestick charting is we can identify where the actual next level of resistance is. Well, my goodness, there actually was a key reversal session. That's not going to be noted on my screen out here. Uh, it is sustainable. It is absolutely sustainable. Um, the move higher inside the NDX 100. In fact, it could actually go at a higher rate out there. At some point in time, I agree that that the angle that you're looking at inside the NDX 100 would not be sustainable. And when it gets to 8,500, then let's talk about the unsustainability of it. But in the semiconductor space out here, you know, really just a sideways consolidation. This ain't no major top. Ain't no major top in sight. That's crazy. We'll go take a look at it. We get back in the break. We'll go take a look at that. We look at the New York Stock Exchange advance decline line. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio 
audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're going to go to the New York Stock Exchange in just a moment because there's something more important that is on my screen that I want you to be able to take notice of. And the volatility index right now trading at 996. It's it's down 9.95% from yesterday's close. Now, at 1.30 in the afternoon, that's not really important. What is important is at uh, 4 o'clock this afternoon, if we see a rate of change that is lower then minus 10%, I'm still trying to figure out how you say that, minus negative 10%, right? So you, is that greater than minus 10, negative 10%? Is it, but lower than minus 10%, minus 10% or more, is that, you, but you know what I'm saying out there. What that turns today into, interestingly enough, is what's called an initiation move. So that would be one of these green candles on my chart out there. You might say, what in the heck are you talking about, Willis? And what I would say is, well, just come back and take a look at the last several times we've had initiation candles out here, especially when you get them back to back, when you get the one day rate of change. Now, sometimes it's within two days. OK, so let's just be reasonable out here. Last time was May 17th when we saw that uh, spot volatility index at uh, uh, one day rate of change of plus 46 percent. And everyone out there, even though you had bears, you know, that were, were crowing like, like there's no tomorrow that the markets were going to continue moving south, you knew differently, right? Just because of one very simple tool. As that's very easy for each and every one of us to be able to track. So that way you could anticipate what the next move was going to be, or at least you would not be surprised by it. And you would, uh, if you're on the short side, you tighten up stops, things of that sort. But two days later is when you had that minus 17% spot volatility rate of change out there that turned into an initiation move so today and we're at minus 9.86 right now that would be turning into the same now why do i share that it, can it fail of, of course i can go find you failures but what i will tell you this is works greater than 90 percent of the time so you tell me do you want the greater than 90 percent of the time is that worth the reward risk out there uh, it's more important uh, for those that are bears out there or maybe have loaded up the truck to say, maybe you want to give that some more consideration. Maybe you want. Now, if, if we don't get that initiation signal out there, then we just simply don't have that initiation signal. Then that means we have to go back and take a look at other things. So I wanted to make sure that I brought that to your attention. I, I had mentioned before the break that the advanced decline line, which is the center panel out here, uh, in my reading, forget about my number because it depends upon where my chart data starts, but right now it's at a fresh new all-time high. 405.935 is the number. The most previous high was either on June 19th or it was here on June 26th. I think it was June 26th. Let's see, 404, 990, 404. Yeah, it was. So again, and, and the thing is that if you go take your advanced decline line data and you go take a look at new all-time highs out there, what you are not going to find is the beginning of a market crash. You're not going to find the beginning of a major top. It's just not the way that advanced decline line data works out there. Never means that you can't get some type of retracement. But what it does mean for those that are in the camp that the market is setting up some type of significant top out here, it just hasn't worked in the past. I don't know why it would start to work in the future. All right, so what else do we take a look at? Well, we mentioned gold, we mentioned silver, so we mentioned a number of different vehicles out here. Let's go take a look at let's go take a look at some of those. Let's go look at the metals for the moment. And I mentioned that silver has given us a nice confirming, confirming bullish signal out here. And what I meant by that is really just what I meant by that. And that is as long as silver trades above 1621, then it's going to go target the 17 ish dollar area. We'll go take a look at market profiles in a few moments here. But you can see that what silver is doing is trading above Stevie's red line. That means that the bottom 
line that you're looking at, that price oscillator, although very difficult to tell by looking at that line. That's why we have the unchanged line above. We know when the bottom line, the price oscillator, has turned up. In this case here, it's turned up. Now, when you're below zero, it just says more counter trend rally. You never know, was it the bottom, was it not? But what you can anticipate is that price should continue moving higher, right? Just knowing the direction of where price wants to go to, and this is not any moving average. You cannot find any moving average that's going to replicate Stevie's red line out there. I, I wish you, I wish I wish you could, because I would give it to you, uh, but but you can't. It just doesn't exist out here. It's not the way that things are calculated. And if price is able to get above 17, which I suspect that it is, then you're going to go back and you're going to go try to retest the highs short of any other um, pattern that would set up inside of silver. So that's what's going. That's the message of silver as we speak. We don't have that same message of gold out here. So I don't know who in the game of liars poker is lying out here but but what are these two are lying or what are these two are just resting and coiling and getting ready to spring to the upside and i wish i could tell you for certain that it was gold it looks like it is gold but we don't have that confirmation as we speak what you and i can see out here is that gold ran right into that resistance line the 1255 stevie's red line on the daily chart it's really important level of support or resistance. In this case here, it is resistance. You can see over the past four days, three of these four days have been nothing more than a test and a rejection of that. Right now, the message for gold is bearish. Until that hurdle gets crossed, there's nothing more bearish than a falling price oscillator below zero. That's what we have on the very bottom panel of our screen out there. There is no other way to call it from a daily perspective. So one of these two are lying. Now, who is it? I wish there was a clear signal to be able to provide to you that would tell us which one it is. And there just isn't. If we go take a look at the Japanese yen, what we do know about the Japanese yen, this is still the weekly chart. Just looking at the weekly chart, you can see that we're basically up against resistance, give or take, you know, a few pips out here. So the question is, is that line of resistance going to hold? Now, here's the bearish case on gold, as long as the correlation exists. Look, we could just read the gold chart as it is, which we did. But now we can come take a look at the currency pair and recognize that there has been, for quite a long period of time, a correlation. And if that correlation is going to continue, and should the Japanese yen take out this 11270-ish type area, uh, you know, how about just simply a descending trend line out here? If gold is able to take that out, then that spells some real trouble. Let's go take a look. Let's put in a channel line out here just for blanks and giggles. So here is your channel line. And here's where, here's where, so if we were in the game of playing liar's poker, and we were going to just take a look at channel work versus trend line work, um, I, I, boy, the, the gold bulls uh, could be running into trouble. Now, this is a weekly chart that you and I are looking at. So this could just be a spike above. And for the bears, I'd say you want to see it close below the channel. You guys can do that in your home game out there. I think it's worth noting these levels of resistance out here. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Who's telling us the truth? Is it silver or is it gold? We're going to find out soon enough. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Will interest rates continue to rise? For bold trades on U.S. Treasuries, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade TMF or TMV. Directions daily, 20 plus year, bull and bear, three times ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. 
A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 162. S&P is up 22. Uh, request to go take a look at the uh, top 100 U.S. companies inside the New York Stock Exchange. So let's go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, the uh, NYSE 100 U.S. Fund, as well as the NYSE International, the top 100 international stocks. So the top panel out here is New York Stock Exchange. We know that is headed back towards its highs out there. And what you and I know is that is not how major market tops form inside the New York Stock Exchange. Consolidations mean we're just building a base to move higher out there. That's the pattern that is inside the New York Stock Exchange. If you look at how just the top 100 stocks are performing, you can see that it is heading back towards its swing point high, really, which was March 1st, 2007, originally, then price closed slightly above that. So there's a new swing point in town out here, and price is really trading inside of it. Let's go mark that level. So let's put a little red line out here so we can find that red line. Red line. Where is it? Plain red line. Okay, there you go. That's a pretty good way to label it. And you can see we're just slightly below that level. I don't have a number on it, but price in essence inside the top 100 headed back towards uh, its swing point high, likely to pull it out. Now, what price has done today so far inside the NYSE top 100 is it's gotten back above. It's turned its price oscillator up. We were just talking about that. So we just simply go ahead and take a look at the indice. And so this gives us a bullish, uh, bullish message. So today it is switching from either neutral or bearish, however you want to go ahead and play this, into a bullish message out here by closing above. Now it hasn't closed. It's 144. Anything can happen during the day. But if it were to close above 94, 93, forget about the change out here, then what you would have is this has switched its, we'll call it polarity. It has switched back to a bullish signal for that specific 
index. Now, if we take a look at the international out here, bottom panel, you know, that's on fire. That's at a new all-time high as we speak right now. So just simply, the New York Stock Exchange has been very, very, very strong. And what's interesting here is that, uh, yes, you know, you and I, we were taking a look at this uh, last week. We were taking a look at it probably yesterday uh, right here. And that was really taking a look at the summation of all the advanced decline data. Of course, we were looking for that. That uh, let me let me do this here. Let me turn on the actual signals. Um, it didn't come to fruition, unfortunately. Uh, what we were looking for, but you can go back and listen to an archive out there, and you can say, yeah, from just a few weeks ago or a week ago. Hey, what is it that we were looking at? Uh, here is the actual advanced decline oscillator that's produced on a daily basis. And yesterday's move out here just got down to reading of minus 27. Uh, that's the blue line you're looking at. What Stevie was hoping for, you know, was kind of like, hey, hey, if somebody, if I, you know, if I rubbed the bottle, the genie came out and said, I can grant you one wish, I'd share with you that one trading wish would be, hey, let's get that advanced decline oscillator down to minus 150, keep the summation index, the summation of all of those previous advanced decline readings right above zero. Yesterday it got to 15.06. Uh, yeah, 15.06, which is pretty close to zero. And I said, then that would be the signal of the market is now getting ready to propel itself higher out there. We didn't get that. Something, and I didn't rub a bottle, and there was no genie that came out. I just shared with you what it might be. And Tarpon 2, uh, the fix stays negative, greater than something t minus 10% or greater than what you have is you have a. Um, you have a uh, uh, you have a confirmation, a, a, an acceleration move, uh, in an, an initiation move signal coming from the uh, from the S and P 500. That's really its message out there, which would be a nice signal to have, considering that all the testing of those horizontal trading ranges has taken place over a um, over the last uh, several uh, weeks out here. So, uh, so that's what's going on there. That was really gold, silver. Oh, light sweet crude. We did talk about light sweet crude. So we should go take a look at it while we have a little bit of time here. Let me switch back over to that workspace. Now, that uh, it should head higher. Should continue to head higher. Here's the uh, here's the chart for light sweet crude. Did light sweet crude? It didn't change contracts, right? We're in the August contract, I believe. Yeah, we're in the August contract. We changed that like a week ago. Um, and here, what you can see, it's uh, yesterday was a slight close above Stevie's red line. Today, you're having some nice acceleration of follow through. And for those of you technologists, which is each of you out there, right? Because if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you can look at this chart right now right here right now and you can identify where price is going to head to right you can identify where the next resistance zone is can't you that's exactly right you're looking at the tom de mark uh, uh uh short term uh horizontal levels of support and resistance the little red dash line the little green dash line it's in like the 46 uh i'm not gonna here i'll give you i'll give you a sort of an exact price but you know it's we're just trying to get uh, the range 4630 ish 4640 ish 4672 that should be a level of resistance and if price is able to break above that, then where price is headed back to is the swing point in the 52 area. Now, that's what its message is. If we go take a look at some market profile data out here, let's go take a look at it. Let's go ahead and use Stevie's synthetic contract out here to try to identify where the next resistance level is inside Lights Week. Well, it's 44.84. That's on a 30-minute chart, but we don't really care about the 30-minute chart. We just want to look at the 60 out here. And the 60 shows no resistance. The 240 shows no resistance. That means price wants to move higher. The daily says 4531. So if you're wondering what's in the bag for light sweet crude and the weekly is back inside the range if it can close above 4449. I don't know whether it is or it isn't. It looks like it is because of the messages that were received yesterday and today. But 4531 is the uh, next area. Now, is that become a short right there? It could. Um, but the way that the structure of this uh, daily market profile is says uh, I don't I don't I don't know.
Uh, question is, can we go take a look at the 30-year uh, and take a look at the oscillator and change line? We can. Uh, what we need to do is uh, go back um, to the other page, and I'll go ahead and uh, pull up that symbol. But in the meantime, what we can do here as well for you uh, is go ahead and throw up the uh, is throw up the market profiles for the 30-year uh, while I'm doing that. So the chart that's on my screen right now are the market profiles while I'm trying to get another chart here set up. And uh, those profiles show that this 155.06 area is a key area of resistance. That's on the 60-minute chart out there. And uh, that says that sellers are lined up right there. The reason why we say that is because of the structure of that profile. The structure of that profile is we'll call bearish. Um, he's, he, and the reason we say that is because the center of the box, that little cyanish color blue line is closer to the top of the box. That's a 60 minute chart. With regard to the daily chart, well, lo and behold, there's a brand new profile that formed today. And so this would say, and this, the bottom of that profile is 155.11. So 155 and six ticks, uh, 630 seconds, 155 and 11 uh, is truly going to be a stiff level of resistance. Close above 155.11, and that says, okay, you could head higher. How much higher? Well, that's where Stevie's red line would come into effect out here. And that would say you could go right up into the 155, 156.35 area. But right now, where's price headed to? Probably in the 30 years, headed right down to the bottom of this rising price channel. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest live programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast nine hours a day starting at 8 a.m. as John Logan kicks us off each trading day with the Global Market Pulse. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour. Following the Tom O'Brien Show, Mondays and Fridays, catch live trading on the Nadex platform with hosts Tom and Tommy O'Brien, along with Daryl Martin on the Bull Bear Binary Option Hour. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN show 
shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN, educating investors. Join David Dwight as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 160. S&P is up uh, 23. So, you know, let's just uh, go back to, in essence, where we started. But I want to make sure that, that you are certainly aware of, and I'm just going to take a look at the S&P 500 as an example right now. And, and what we'll do is uh, you can see that we've just been in, for the last four weeks, really a very narrow range. Now, intra-week, we've seen some swings to the upside, to the downside. But really, the body of the candle is truly the essence of price. Order. By the way, inside of the S&P 500, if we're to take a look at all of the Japanese candle signals and try to uh, find where the next level of, uh, of support is on this thing, uh, what we would do is we would just simply go to this little rising window right here. And it's going to be about right here in the 2368 level to just slightly above that 2361, where that little that little uh, blue line is. That, in essence, would really, in essence, be a, a level of support. If price were to pull back to there, there would be no problems. But the reason why we're taking a look at, hey, what's going on in the market is that we're really in this fairly narrow banded range out here so it means and you need to understand you want to understand what kind of market conditions we're in because it's really a trader's marketplace out there and if we if you have that uh, piece of information then it'll then it'll be helpful to you now speaking of that for those that believe the Russell 2000 is a weak link out here, then what you should see shortly is some type of turn inside the Russell 2000. If you believe that the Russell 2000 is leading us up and is going to lead us down, well, then you've got your wish. You must have touched that bottle. Out came the genie and whispered in your ear, hey, you are in wave number seven, letter G, on the chart out here. Now, it doesn't mean that it's going to, well, actually, in the next three minutes, it actually could confirm. I don't know whether it will or won't but if it makes a slightly higher high then it goes on for another half an hour out here if price were to fall inside the uh, tf you're looking at moving down to about 1421 70 give or take before it would really produce some type of signal for you but if the market's going to turn it's going to happen right in the lap of your favorite polar bear in mind and that would be david white it could be prolonged into tom o'brien's lap out there obi-wan kenobi but uh, at this stage here if this is the weak link this is it this is as far as the Russell 2000 should head. The real level of support that you would be watching inside the uh, futures contract. And the reason you and I pay attention to the futures contract is because if you and I got our signals just by looking at the ETFs, and I'm referring to the index ETFs, we would never get our signals. You would not have gotten this morning's signal at 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. It just doesn't happen. So you don't have to trade these futures contracts. But if you trade the indices out here, you want to make sure that you get access to it, however you can, and learn these patterns that you and I look at or others that teach you out there that uh, work uh, consistently and you'll be okay. Inside the Russell 2000, it's going to be Stevie's red line, which is 14, 15, 20. As long as price stays above that, then uh, the, the, the tone of the Russell 2000 would be bullish out here. And it really looks like that is the case. Looks like that seventh wave is not going to go ahead and stop price. It's going to continue moving, uh, continue moving higher, which could be, quite frankly, continue moving higher for the rest of June and most of uh, July. But we'll take things one step at a time, one ping at a time. Hey, where is that U.S. dollar index headed to? Is this thing ever going to stop? Now, this is a weekly chart, and you're already back into the 2016 September area. Of course, that is the current contract. If we take a look at the continuous contract, well, we'll get some other data out here. Um, but what the U.S. dollar index is doing, what is it doing? It's going to be forming a bottom soon. I just don't know that we're there just yet. But it's probably getting ready to form a pretty significant bottom. It's just not here today at 158 in the afternoon. Folks, thanks so much. Have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you on uh, Terrific Thursday. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White, is up next. Take care, folks.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under trading newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.